On this channel, I talk a lot about changing how you shop. And although that can be a great thing, it can be a difficult task, but also one that might not always feel so positive. It's really easy to get hard on yourself or be hard on yourself and feel like you're just not doing enough or you're not doing well. So today I wanted to talk about something more positive in the realm of shopping and habit change. And one of the reasons for that is because I think you're probably doing better than you realize. If you're on a no buy, low buy, or you're in the process of changing your habits, there's a fairly good chance, a pretty good chance that you've achieved some small wins that you may not have noticed or celebrated. So today we're going to be talking about five wins, five successes, five things that you've probably already done. And I want to flag them and bring them to your attention today because they are a reason to celebrate or a reason to, you know, look at yourself and be like, you know what? I'm doing better than I thought. I hope that's one of the takeaways of this video. I hope that after watching this video, you realize that you're doing better than you think and that you're doing the damn thing. And if you leave this video and you're like, man, I didn't give myself enough credit, I hope you start to. <laughs> let's get into it and let's start with number one. You're no longer afraid to open your credit card bills or look at your bank statements. This was me before I changed my habits. I hated looking at my bank account or getting my credit card bills. I avoided it. I avoided it because looking at them always made me feel a little bit of shame, but also there was a lot of, I spent how much kind of going on. I knew that I wouldn't like what I was going to see. That felt so true. It seemed like a fact. I was every bill for years. I was truly surprised as to how much I was spending. And if you are no longer afraid of your bills, means a couple of things. One, you're looking at them. So you've already started doing something. You're looking at your bills and you are aware. You can't do anything if you don't know where you're starting from, if you don't know what actually needs to change. So looking at these things is an awareness. No longer having this fear or, you know, avoiding looking at your bills probably means like one of the following. One, you are looking at them regularly, which also means that you're not going to have any surprises. And when you're aware, like you're, you're checked into how you're spending, you know how you're spending and you know where your money's going. And when you're checked in, you're more likely to spend in ways that you deem desirable or beneficial. Once you check in once, I feel like the first time is kind of like the big one. To me, to come back more than once typically means that, like you've made some sort of like resolution. Like I'm going to stay on top of it. I'm going to check in. And that honestly goes a long way in changing your habits and making changes. And so if you've gone past the first one, and you're coming back for more, it likely means that like you're working on other goals and a check-in is like now a check-in and not a reality check, which is like a wonderful place to be. Editing Shauna here. I wanted to also add that if you're no longer afraid of your bills, that means that you're checking them. That means that you're taking a look and even if you're afraid, you're checking them anyways, which, you know, kind of goes to everything that I've said before. But what I was really trying to get at, at the end is that if you're, you've been avoiding checking your bank statements, credit card statements, like you don't want to, to do that and you, and you've been avoiding it. It's the first time that you look, that's the reality check. You're avoiding the first time. And then once you know, you know. So if you've gone back to take a look again, now it's not so much I'm scared of knowing like you know your state it's now the follow-up it's now the maintenance that kind of happens after plus why would you check your finances if you weren't planning to do anything about them 
you would just keep avoiding them. So checking them at all means that you're trying to make some steps. You're trying to move in the right direction and you just want some knowledge before you do. Number two is nonlinear progress. One of the biggest mindset traps that I found for people who are changing their habits or people who are on no buys is this very black and white view of failure. I talked about this in my recent perfectionism video. So if you want to hear more on that, you can go watch that video. There's this black and white view of failure, which kind of says that one slip up means that you failed or that one slip up is a mistake and therefore a mistake equals failure. If you're making mistakes, you're also making progress, as in you're also doing something. You're making moves. You're making some kind of effort to make a change, and you've simply made a mistake. You can't really make a mistake without trying. If you're making progress, basically any progress, that is something to celebrate, because even if you are 10% better than you were six months ago, we, you know, we can frame it as, oh, I'm not 50% better, I'm not 100% better, but you're 10% ahead of where you were six months ago. You could be shopping and spending in the exact same ways, but the truth is you're not. You saved some money along the way. You've noticed something about yourself, something about your, your triggers, your spending habits. You've literally done something. And that means you're literally not in the same place as you were. Change doesn't happen overnight in the majority of instances. You don't wake up one day and your spending is just 100% in the way that you want. With most things in life, including habit change, you achieve changes incrementally. You get to step 100 through steps 1 through 99. You need to make each step in order to get to the end goal. Change happens as progress, and not as perfection. And for folks who might be on a no buy, this view is especially strong. I don't buy for 365 days or I'm a failure. But if you are not buying more days than you are buying, then you're doing it. Like you're also changing your habits and you're also changing the way you spend and saving money. Was the goal really to be perfect or was the goal to change? I mean, I feel like we can get lost in that shuffle. And that's also one of the reasons why we don't get to celebrate ourselves in the way that we would want. Number three, you're asking yourself questions when you're shopping. Starting to ask yourself questions during the shopping process or even after are signs that you're starting to think differently. Part of the habit change is the mindset shift. And we do have to think differently in order to act differently. And so if you're asking questions like, do I want this? Do I need this? Do I like this? Even asking yourself, do I like this? Am I interested in this? Do I think I could use this? Could I see myself finishing this up? Asking yourself any of these questions if you weren't before, you know, is a sign of change. And I also don't want you to downplay that because it's all too easy to be like, oh, I'm just asking myself one question or I'm just doing it some of the time. Were you ever asking yourself questions in meaningful ways before? If the question is no, then this is progress. Don't belittle yourself because you're not some kind of shopping philosopher. You don't need to be in order to make change. And asking yourself questions after the fact is also part of the process as well and also can be indicative of change as well. Just because you bought something doesn't mean that you have no options left or that y you can't change your mind or make a realization after the fact. If you're able to acknowledge that you've made a mistake or realize, you know what, this isn't actually something that I need. You've still made that realization. You still have that ability to return the item and realizing even after the fact is still realizing. And realizing after the fact is usually a step that we need to take in order to start making realizations in the buying process to begin with. So this is a great step forward. Number four, you've changed your mind about past purchases. 
If we're able to see past purchases in a new light, that's likely evidence of change. And the past can also be the recent past, like last month. Being able to see things differently is likely indicative of mindset change or new evidence. Bonus points if you use this knowledge to inform future decision making or future purchases. It's one thing, I do want to be clear, it's one thing to be like, oop, oops, like, sorry, you shouldn't have spent the money, ha ha ha. No, th- th- that's one thing. You know, being like, you know what, I actually have a lot of t-shirts, I have enough, I shouldn't have bought that one at Target. That's different. I remember on my no-buy, I bought a handful of clothing items because I needed it. Or I phrased them as, I needed them. With some time, being it a few weeks, I was able to realize that I didn't actually need them. What I wanted was to buy something new. I was bored with my clothes. And in order for me to buy them, I had to frame them as needs. Because if something was a need, then I could buy it in the framework of my no buy. My t-shirts were perfectly wearable, perfectly usable, and I had enough to get through more than a week. Being able to apply critical lens on your shopping or your mindset, or being honest about how you shopped or why you shopped, that's indicative of change. Realizing that you were not shopping with the intention that you thought that you were is also indicative of change. We, we get so caught up in being perfect and making mistakes that we can forget where growth comes from. The growth comes from the realization that you didn't buy the thing with the intention that you thought that you did, that you've changed your mind on how you've shopped and why you've shopped, and that you're able to be honest. That's growth. That's not a mistake. Number five is you're evaluating what you own. Evaluating what you own usually leads to a breakthrough of I own a lot more than I realized. It can also lead to a sense of overwhelm, but it can also be indicative of somebody who is intentionally trying to cultivate a mindset shift or somebody who's intentionally trying to grapple with the things that you own. Intent matters, and we learned that a lot in cultural moments of the past five to 10 years. And so if you're coming to a category of your life, with this intention of let me evaluate, let me try and learn from it is a new mindset shift that you didn't have previously. You weren't really interested in knowing about how much you had or how long it would last or really grappling with quantity and, and stuff and enoughness thinking about those things and finding ways to do that is a sign of change, is is a sign of somebody who's trying to figure things out and who is trying to cultivate difference. If you didn't care about how much you were spending or changing your shopping habits, you wouldn't be looking at these things in the first place. You wouldn't be hoping for a mindset shift. You wouldn't be hoping to learn new knowledge and you just wouldn't be bothering And when you evaluate what you own, as I've said, you can get the breakthrough, but then there can also be solutions that come with that. Maybe I'll project pan, maybe I'll declutter, maybe I'll find ways to enjoy what I have. Then solutions can come from the grappling with how much I own and questioning if I'll use it, if I like these things. But first is the evaluation. So those are the five things. And I bet that you've probably done at least one of the things on this list. And if that's you, you're making progress, friend. And I hope that you focus on that and you celebrate the progress that you are making instead of beating yourself up or saying that you could be farther, you could do better. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you are able to appreciate your efforts and yourself just a little bit more. Thank you for watching. I hope that you subscribe to catch more content like this because y'all, there's some great content coming your way. I'll see you later.